Well, I'm Jeff Simons, and I'm um, Minister of Adult Outreach at Gracie Van, where I've been the last 10 years. Uh, I had occasion uh, to play for the legendary Tex winner at Kansas State, and uh, my, oh my, uh, what an experience to play for a man that had the knowledge that he has. Uh, if you don't know, he was assistant coach uh, with Phil Jackson, both with the Bulls and with the Lakers. And he often is called an offensive genius, known for his uh, developing of an offense called the Triangle Offense. I have uh, global missions as one of my responsibilities at Gracie Van, and that has allowed me to take uh, basketball evangelism trips uh, to the Orient, uh, to Cuba, to Brazil, and all of the Latin American countries uh, by next year where I share the, the gospel and I teach basic fundamentals to the kids and to the coaches in those countries. And it's been a fabulous, fabulous thing. And uh, God has used that and I have felt that it's uh, been very beneficial not only to their picking up basketball better, but also being introduced to spiritual elements and faith and what it means to be a Christian. So I think this video can be used in a lot of ways. I think if you're young, you're going to pick up from it. I think if you were uh, in college or going into the pros, you could use this because it is the basic fundamentals of all basketball with the final part being what I'm calling the Big 12, which are 12 offensive moves that I guarantee will make you a better basketball player. So I'm delighted to be able to, to be a part of this. Hope this helps boys and girls, men and women all over the country. Yes, maybe even all over the world. I want to take some time now to, sh to share something with you of vital importance. The Bible contains 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. And I want to take just one verse from one chapter and share with you a basic theme of the Bible that I think is very important. The verse that I've chosen only contains 20 words. It's Romans 6, 23. And the verse goes like this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I'd like to break that down into bad news because there is bad news about us that we have to deal with. And then good news, which comes from God. And then let you know how it's possible for you to obtain it. Let's take the bad news from Romans 6.23. It says, the wages of sin is death. Now, we all know what wages are. Uh, we love being paid for what we do. Uh, whether it's hourly or monthly or twice a month, we love receiving wages. We love receiving payment. We love receiving compensation for acts of service which we've done for money. But here, it's, there's spiritual application because the wages are for sin. Now, we know what sin is. Sin is what we do uh, when we commit things that we shouldn't do, when we commit sins. We, commit to tres trespasses. We can also admit, omit. We can, we can fail to do things that we should do. That's sin also. And the Bible speaks a lot about sin. It says this, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says there are none, no one who's righteous. No, not one. So I conclude that the Bible says all are sinners. All fail. And the wages for that sin, failure to deal with that sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Now, there's only two places you can spend eternity, either in heaven or in hell. And all will spend eternity in one of those two places. Let's talk about death and hell, because the Bible says quite a bit about it. Um, I've been told that there are more scriptures dealing with hell than any other subject in the Bible. So we need to know about it. We need to stay away from it. Here's what the Bible says about death. It says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many will find it. My friend, do you hear that there are going to be a lot of people 
spending eternity in hell. But it also says that narrow is the path and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life and few that will enter therein. The wages for your sin and my sin is death, separation from God, eternity spent in hell. And my, my friend, that's bad news. Oh, but that's not the end of Romans 6.23 because the next word is the conjunction B-U-T which transitions and connects to some very, very good news. The gift from God is eternal life. Let's talk about those, those three. We all like to receive gifts. Whether it be Christmas or a birthday or some special event, we all enjoy receiving gifts. But when it, when it comes to spiritual application and what the Bible says, uh, we have to receive from God that gift. We cannot obtain anything on our own. And I like to focus on a passage called Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, where it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. It's a gift from God, lest any man should boast. You see, we can, we can try to work ourselves to obtain God's favor. That's working. That's trying to do it on our own. Or we can receive that gift, which is a part of the good news, the gift from God. Uh, I want to point out to you that your merits, your performance, what you do does not get God excited at all. God gives to you the free gift. So the good news is you've got a gift waiting for you. And that gift comes from God who allowed, God allowed His Son, Jesus Christ, to be the substitute for your sins. And probably the most quoted verse of the Bible is John 3.16. And I want you to hear the gift in here. For God so loved the world that He gave gift. His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, my friend, God has a gift. That gift was His only Son who died on a cross to pay the penalty of our sin. And He never sinned Himself. Yet, He became sin for us, even though He knew no sin, that we might receive the righteousness of God. What a gift! God provides for us. God's gift is eternal life. That's heaven. That's the side that's narrow and more difficult to find, but it's a wonderful place because not only do we leave this world when we die and go to heaven, but we have the life of Christ as we live because the Bible says we're in union with Christ. So if you receive the gift that you don't merit, that you don't deserve, that you don't earn, but if you receive it from God as a gift, the benefit is eternal life. Life with Christ forever and ever and ever. Bad news, wages, sin, death, but good news, gift, God, eternal life. Now, who connects this? Who brings this all together? Don't miss the last part of Romans 6.23. It comes through Jesus Christ the Lord. And may I say to you, that's the only way. There is no other way. You can say, I'll follow my conscience. Man, well, your conscience will mess up. You can say, well, if I'm just sincere, if I'm just sincere, yeah, you'll be sincere one day and unsincere the next. There's only one you can trust in. And he said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's the answer. It's Jesus only. So my dear friend, there's bad news. Ah, but good news. Provided from the one who can, only one who can provide the good news for you. The Lord Jesus Christ, who came to die on the cross for your sins and live within you as your Savior and Lord. Let me use this book for application. Let's say that this book contained every sin that Jeff Simons committed. 
and I've committed about that many. And let's say this palm of my hand contains the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to share a verse with you that will show you what Jesus wants to do for your sins and my sins as he completes the great transaction whereby we become believers in Jesus Christ. And also show you not only one imputation, but double imputation. You say, what's imputation? Imputation is to impute, to place on another's account your obligations. Here are my sins. I'm obligated for them because I committed them. But listen and watch this. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've gone every one our own way. But God hath laid on him, this is Jesus, the sins and the iniquity of us all. Would you notice that my hand is now free from sins? That my sins have been placed on Jesus Christ? That he died for my sins? What wonderful, wonderful news. I'm free. And the scripture said, as the, the son shall make you free, then you shall be free indeed. So you see the first imputation. My sins placed on Jesus' account where he died on the cross. It's not over. Look at the double imputation. Because his righteousness was placed on my account. I'm not righteous. I'm a sinner. But his righteousness was placed on my account. And the second imputation takes place. What a wonderful doctrine. What a wonderful truth that God would do that for me as a gift. I didn't deserve it. I didn't obtain it. I can't work for it. He did it for me because he loved me and died on the cross for my sins. He became sin for me even though he knew no sin that I might become the righteousness of Christ in him. So that, my friend, is great news. That, my friend, is a great transaction that Jesus Christ has done for you. I hope that as you see this video, perhaps you'll go to some of the verses that we mentioned, Romans 6.23, John 14.6, and look, at your, look for yourself at some of these scriptures. And I am praying that God, just like for me, will come into your life, change your life, transform your life, and make you to be something you never thought you could be. Believe me, he can do it. And as I close, I want to share with you my life's verse. This happened to me as a 19-year-old, years and years ago, in a little town in Kansas. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone become in Christ, they're a new person. Old things are passed away. All things become new. That's my life. I became new when I trusted in Jesus and Him alone to be my Savior and Lord. Won't you do that too?